Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is throttling overview for finance and operations integrations. My name is Nina, and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams live events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. By participating in this session using Microsoft Teams, your name, email address, phone number, and or title may be viewable by other session participants. If you do not consent to being a part of the recorded session, please disconnect at this time. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have any questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions during today's presentation, and there will be time at the end for further questions. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Now on to the presentation. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Sunil Garg, Principal Group Program Manager, Hitham Syed, Senior Program Manager, Raul Agarwal, Architect, and Sunil, over to you. Thanks, and good morning and good evening, everyone. Um, first off, thank you for taking the time uh, to join us for the session. Um, so today with me um, is uh, Rahul Agarwal and Haitam Syed and myself, Sunil Garg, and we are going to cover the topic of um, throttling in financial operations, which is a new capability that is um, getting previewed in plat platform update 37 uh, shortly. Um, so Haitam, can you? Switch to the slide. So from an agenda perspective, we will first spend some time talking about the current set of challenges um, and why throttling was even uh, conceived and why we have been working on this functionality. And uh, we will go into the uh, details of how throttling will work. So we'll understand how throttling has been implemented. And equally important will be for us to understand what throttling is not going to do for us and what throttling is not. Um, and then we'll switch over to a quick demo uh, to show you what is going to be there in platform update 37. And then we'll um, you know, wrap up by talking about some action items that we all have to um, you know, take notes on and follow up uh, going forward. And then we'll open up for Q&A. So with that, um, when we look at our current set of challenges, which I'm sure all of us are very familiar with, uh, this should be uh, not a surprise to any of us. Um, you know, we oftentimes run into situations where, uh, at least from an integrations perspective, um, whether it is OData integrations or custom services integrations, we oftentimes start seeing um, behaviors that are random in nature in terms of failures. We start seeing issues related to uh, system slowness, um, which also affects other online users in some cases. So uh, after looking at the various uh, flavors of such issues over time, what is uh, the common denominator across all these kinds of issues is the fact that the, the environment, the system has a finite um, set of resources. And the finite set of resources is a common pool of resources that is um, catering to integrations, that is catering to online user sessions, that is catering to all the other scenarios and business transactions that are operating and executing on that environment. And as a result, what happens is if the system is subjected, if the environment is subjected to overutilization of these resources, then the user experience, integrations, the scenarios, and all of that starts to get impacted in a negative way. And that is where um, you know, we start thinking about, OK, how can we avoid such a thing to happen uh, to begin with? And then when we take a step back and start thinking about how was the environment even uh, provisioned, then uh, we, we go back to the sizing that was done uh, during the environment planning uh, stages of the implementation. And we all try to, you know, um, fill in the sizing sheet to the best of our knowledge in terms of 
expectations of what the transaction volume uh, might be today, six months from now, 12 months from now. Uh, what are the kind of workloads that we anticipate in the environment that will be subjected to um, to traffic? And based on that, the based on that sizing information um, that is that is input into the sheet, the environment is sized and then you know um, the system goes live. However, um, as we all know again, more often than not, what was planned from a traffic and load perspective uh, is oftentimes different from the reality. It could be uh, as planned for the initial few months of go live, but as time progresses, as businesses expand, the number of transactions, the load, the, the pattern of traffic that uh, comes into the environment also changes and evolves. And nine out of 10 times, it is always more than what the environment was sized for. So uh, that being the case, we should always expect um, at some point in the life cycle of the environment, it is going to get subjected to um, you know, over utilization of resources. And in such a case, um, what can we do in terms of uh, proactively trying to avoid at least um, preventing random failures of integrations, uh, which might be difficult to even investigate? Um, how can we prevent uh, user experience deterioration for users that are interacting with the system uh, through the user interface itself? and all of a sudden the system st stops to respond or systems become super slow. How can we prevent all these, um, um, you know, lack of experiences, if you will, and how can we make sure that integrations are, um, are still running smoothly without impacting um, any other, uh, you know, usage of the system? The other uh, aspect of it, you know, what we talk now is purely from a FNO perspective, what happens in the environment and how the users and integrations are affected um, coming into the environment. But the other side is the clients, um, the integration clients that are actually uh, sending requests and getting information from FNO through OData or custom services, for example. And when the client sees a timeout or when the client sees a failure that this request did not actually go through, more often than not, every client uh, implements some sort of a retry mechanics. And what happens is um, the first request that came in that got uh, timed out or that got failed, let's take the example of timeout, that got timed out because the system was busy and overutilized already, and hence it could not get back and process the request uh, within time. The client is going to send the request again because there is some retry logic that every client uh, implements. And then what happens is if this continues for uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, then all of a sudden we start seeing the same request running multiple times on the environment, which even leads to you know, sometimes exponential deterioration of the overall situation, which was anyways bad to begin with. So these are the you know, challenges today um, and the, the complaints that we get, the support cases that you all uh, log for us to take a look at and the pain that all of you go through um, in this context is not surprising and um, this is the overall uh, landscape we are in, which actually, uh, you know, that is the reason why we started working on throttling as a mechanics to actually help the situation and to try and prevent this from even happening. So now um, let's understand what throttling is going to do for us. We all understand what throttling is. Um, it is, it is not a new concept but we want to understand how it is implemented in finance and operations and what were the objectives of such an implementation. Again, uh, to take a step back, I think we kind of um, went through this, this process. I mean, everything starts from a sizing exercise to size the environment to the best of our knowledge. 
um, and then the environments get provisioned and then businesses go live and transaction starts happening. And as we talked about it over time, the usage of the system varies, starts to vary and deviate from uh, how it was envisioned and planned to be utilized. And as a result, um, you know, overutilization of systems uh, starts to uh, show up, uh, you know, more often than not. And that is when, uh, you know, we want to step in and, and help and make sure that um, the system is at least responsive and it is not getting into a state where everyone, whether it is integrations or users interacting with the systems are unable to get anything done in the system. So that is where uh, the throttling functionality comes into play. And the first piece of the throttling functionality is, you know, we took a bottoms up approach, uh, which is how can we know to begin with that uh, throttling is happening and throttling must be done? How can as a customer, how can as a user, you can know that this is my workload pattern and yes, I can see that at some point throttling can happen to my workload because unless and until that understanding is there about um, our workloads, uh, how the traffic pattern is, it becomes difficult to actually um, you know, determine what the throttling behavior is going to be and how is that going to impact if at all from an integrations perspective. So that is where the monitoring aspect comes into play, where as we will see in the demo, um, in LCS, you, you will be able to go and start uh, looking and uh, looking at the, the telemetry, the data that will help us understand what is the traffic on the system from an OData and custom services perspective. Um, and what would the system have done? You know, it's like a simulation, for example. Uh, it, would the system have throttled these OData calls, these custom services calls, yes or no? So that understanding, that information will be available in LCS, and that is the first step for us to start looking at so that we understand our own workloads as to um, this is the rate at which the calls come in. Uh, OData calls are more than custom services, for example. The OData calls are, you know, um, high high throughput during this time of the day versus um, the other times of the day, for example. So understanding that pattern is important so that uh, other decisions can be made as far as throttling is concerned, which we will talk about. So once that understanding is established, um, then the next step is to configure throttling uh, itself uh, based on the priority of the integrations. Uh, so we'll spend some time talking about uh, what this priority based throttling is. Um, at a very high level, what this means is if the system is unable to process any more requests, then it has to throttle. Now, should the system start throttling requests as they come in, like first come, first serve, or should there be some intelligence in the system where as a user, we can go and tell the system that out of my 20 integrations that I have, 15 are OData, five are custom services, and I am assigning priority of low, medium, or high to these integrations so that in case you have to throttle my integrations, then don't just throttle based on whichever request comes next, but rather start to throttle based on the priority, which means if the system has to start throttling, it will throttle the low priority integrations first and then medium. And still, if the system is subjected to high traffic um, and it is going to hit the max threshold, it will start throttling the higher priority uh, integrations at that point in time. So this comes in, um, you know, very handy from a business criticality perspective. Like for example, during the month end, uh, last last week of the month or the you know last week and the first week of the months, 
when month end processing is happening, uh, you know, certain O data calls needs to be high priority. Uh, as for example, if users are interacting with uh, Excel import export, for example, uh, using Excel add in, that behind the scene is O data. So if there are accountants that are going to do that time and again every uh, month at the end of the month, then um, you know it can be configured to say that you know these users need to be prioritized over my other integration because I don't want them to uh, be subjected to any throttling as they are going through their critical month end processing, for example, right? So that logic can be applied across the board. Uh, and that is where the business critical nature uh, comes in, and that is where the mapping to high, medium, and low priority comes into play, which we will see how that surfaces in the configuration itself. So once uh, you know we have understood the the patterns, the traffic, the workload, and once we have determined the priorities, we have configured the priority for throttling. Throttling is enabled, right? I mean, at that point. It's a matter of system getting into certain thresholds, and if there is more requests coming in, the system will start to throttle. When the system starts to throttle, what happens is the system will send back a 429 to the client saying that, sorry, uh, this request cannot be processed right now. Um, instead, can you please resend this request after X minutes of time? Uh, so that information will be there in the 429 itself, which the client can use in the retry logic. But instead of retrying right away or having some custom uh, wait time, the client can use the time that was suggested by FNO in the 429, and the client can retry that request after that amount of time. And the time that uh, the wait time that comes in 429 is is a dynamically calculated value uh, based on the system load at that point in time. So um, it is not a hard coded static value. Uh, it will keep changing based on uh, how the load uh, is on the system at any given point in time. So the expectation is once the clients starts to uh, use the 429s and respond as expected then um, we should be able to prevent um, you know, any degradation of service both to integration scenarios and also for online users because the system will now be able to maintain uh, you know, hygiene. The system will be able to preserve the responsiveness uh, and sanity of itself uh, because it is able to gatekeep and prevent requests from overwhelming the system itself. Um, so that is the the you know high level rundown of what throttling is going to do for us uh, in finance and operations. Next slide, Michael. So equally important for us to understand is what is not throttling, right? I think the first um, and the foremost thing for us to understand is throttling is not enforcing any API rate limits, right? Throttling is not here to say that, sorry, you are sending you know, 100 requests per hour or you know, 100 requests per minute. You cannot do that anymore. That is not the objective of throttling. That is not the intent of throttling. Because to begin with, we have not told you what should be the maximum throughput that you should be sending into the system, right? If we had given that guidelines and if we had published those, then we can have that conversation, which is, okay, these are the published guidelines. And if there is more requests coming in, then the system will throttle. But in the absence of that guidance that we have not given uh, our, our users and customers, the objective of throttling is not to do any kind of rate limit, but the objective of throttling is to make sure that whatever SLA was promised um, and whatever the environment was sized for, the environment is usable um, in a reasonable manner all the time for integrations and also for um, you know, online sessions. And when we talk about integrations, we are 
specifically talking about OData and custom services because this is where the throttling has been implemented as of now. Um, DIXF is not subjected to throttling as of now. We want to learn through this process with all of you and then take the feedback and then see uh, how can we enable that for DIXF going forward sometime in future. Um, also, throttling is not a solution for a bad design of integrations uh, in general, uh, whether it is a data entity design issue or some other design issue in the code. I mean, throttling is not going to solve that, which means if there is a slow query that always exe is executing slow for this specific request or for this specific entity, I mean, there is some problem with that entity itself or somewhere in that in that design that needs to be addressed regardless of um, uh, throttling trying to still preserve the system sanity, right? So throttling is not a uh, solution for bad entity design or bad integration design in general, but throttling is there to prevent uh, the system from being getting crippled for various reasons. Now, if we move on to the next slide. So this is the throttling configuration that we have been talking about, and this is something uh, you know Hytham will show in the demo as well. Basically, the, the idea is today in FNO, um, you know, you are able to go and configure uh, the integration uh, in the Azure application uh, configuration form in FNO, where you can go and say that this is my AAD app ID and this is mapping to this user so that FNO can uh, authorize that incoming request based on that configuration. What uh, the form that we are seeing right now is basically a form that is going to use information from that uh, configuration. And then on top of that, it allows us to assign priority of low, medium and high. And this becomes the input to the throttling uh, engine, which will um, use uh, to throttle when situation demands that throttling has to happen. And the way the throttling logic will kick in is, you know, there are thresholds that are built into the throttling engine. Um, and when the low threshold, uh, when the system is nearing the low threshold and it has touched the low threshold, uh, it will start to throttle low priority uh, integrations. Um, and at that point, if there are high priority and medium priority requests coming in, uh, it is going to allow that to go in and it will be processed which can result in the system utilization increasing and it might hit the next threshold, which is the medium threshold, at which point low priority and medium priority will start getting throttled while the high priority can still come in and get processed. Now, those can still result in pushing the system even more further towards reaching the high priority or the high threshold, at which point any request or data and custom services coming in will start getting throttled. So that's kind of the high level logic of how the throttling is going to work. Now, um, yes, one can go and set all integrations to high priority to game the system, but that is uh, not going to uh, meet the objectives for why uh, you know throttling is there. So we will not be realizing uh, the benefits of throttling if we just go and configure everything as high. Uh, because at that point in time, you know, we are always subjecting the system to reach the high threshold, which may not be desirable at any point in time. Um, can we switch slides? Yeah, so Haitham, uh, I'll hand off to Haitham for a quick uh, demo and then we can come back to the slides. Thank you, Sunil. Uh, so Hello everyone. Um, I'm gonna take you through a quick um, demo on how to configure uh, the priorities and how would the experience look like. Um, so if I log into my um, FNO, um, to set up any integration, I have to first register my application in the Azure Active Directory application. And this is usually when I 
enter and set up my client ID and I assign a name and then I assign the user ID that will come with this uh, uh, was assigned with this integration. Then once I complete my setup, this is what we call an app uh, Azure AD app based integrations. And as Sunil mentioned, uh, there is another type of integrations like the Excel, for example, which is use all data and this doesn't require any uh, registration and this is considered as a user based uh, integration. Once I have completed my setup, I would go um, again and I will go to uh, throttling priority mapping and I can go to this from my system administration menu as well and it will be the throttling priority form. Here I would have to assign a priority to my uh, app ID defined already in the Azure Active Directory or to my user ID. Um, once I select my authentication type, I would be able to select directly from the Azure uh, AD table or if I would select a user, I would be able to select a user defined already in my um, users table. And then based on that, I will assign high, medium, low priority um, based on my uh, business scenario or uh, based on uh, the, the the type of process I'm doing, like for example, as as we mentioned before, at the end of the month, at, at specific uh, you know operations, um, I can assign those um, priorities. And then once the business starts, and based on the health of the system, the throttling manager will be able to determine the health state and will start throttling the request, honoring the priorities defined um, here um, for system admins to be able to access this particular form. Also, we have uh, created a security role that uh, if you don't want to assign a system admin role to a specific user, you can just assign the throttling manager uh, uh, configuration manager to this particular user so they can just maintain the configuration of um, the priorities. And also once the throttling will will, will happen, I can go to my environment monitoring in LCS and if I go to the activity and row logs, I can simply select the query all throttling events. I can put my start date and end date and then I can search for my throttling events and we have simulated a test um, of an integration and as we have seen like the first request with the medium priority when throttling kicked in has been throttled and then the rest of the requests are not being uh, throttled uh, due to a specific retry or due to a higher uh, priority and by doing so I would be able to analyze the data more to see whether I need to adjust uh, my priorities uh, what type of integration I would add a retry um, those sort of like answers I need to uh, uh, answer based on my uh, analysis um, of this pattern. Um, that concludes the part of the experience and uh, I will go back to the slides and back to Sunil. Thank you. Thanks, Aitam. Um, so before we jump into Q&A, uh, let's summarize and try to understand the call to action. Basically, these are some of the logical steps that we should be thinking about starting now. And um, in that process, uh, you know, as we said, platform update 37, which tentatively will be available uh, in PEEP uh, early August, uh, give or take a week or so, uh, but tentatively early August. So that is when um, throttling will be available as a preview. And, uh, you know, we should all start to look into it, start playing with it, understand how it practically works and um, and basically, you know, give us feedback. Um, however, from a planning perspective, how can one plan to to enable throttling in production? The first step will be to, um, you know, once platform update 37 is in production to basically start monitoring the workloads and understanding the workload patterns 
using the report in LCS that Haitham showed, right? So there is no throttling at this point in time. Uh, things continue to be the way it is, but there is still a report that is available in LCS that will, you can think of that as a simulation report that shows you if throttling were enabled, how throttling would have happened, which requests would have got throttled um, and which requests would have gone through. So that report becomes important uh, as a first step for us to understand and monitor our own uh, workloads. And that should help us to again have conversations amongst uh, you know, yourself within your team, your business to basically identify the critical nature of these uh, integrations and determine which ones are going to be um, qualified as low versus medium versus high. Once that understanding is, is uh, you know, arrived at, then you can basically configure throttling in one of the test environments and you can base you can you can enable it for testing you can subject the same kind of uh, traffic and load to that test environment and that is when uh, throttling will happen uh, for real because you have configured throttling uh, you have configured the priority uh, for those throttling and when throttling happens in the test environment you can again use the lcs report to actually see the results of the real throttling and if there is any fine tune up required, um, you know, you can, you know, you can tweak that. And that is the learning process, learning phase uh, of, of how throttling might be configured finally in production. Now, this is also the phase where the integration clients needs to be updated to uh, respond to 429s in a manner we discussed earlier. And uh, once those clients are uh, updated, you know, you can go through that testing and validation process. And once that is all completed, then um, the throttling can be configured the way it was tested uh, in production. And once production is configured um, for throttling, then throttling will start happening as we discussed based on the load and the system resources and, and, and whatnot. Now, um, this is the recommended process between now and April 2021, which is um, you know almost 10 months um, that we have. But if for some reason any environment, any production environment um, has not yet configured throttling, then starting April 2021, uh, the system will enforce default throttling. And what that means is, uh, since there is no priority and the system has to you know, maintain and preserve the system sanity, it will start throttling based on the first come first serve basis, which is whichever request comes in next. And if the system is unable to uh, perform or it thinks that it cannot perform because the system is already you know, overutilized, then it will, um, it will you know, start throttling that request. So uh, what we the request is, um, the plan is that for all of us to start uh, playing with this ASAP when it is available, um, starting PU37, and um, learn and understand how that is happening and also give us feedback because we also want to take this time of, you know, between now and April to learn from all of your experiences and if there is anything that is um, you know, a real issue and we really want to know about that and we can, you know, address that so that by the time April comes, you know, we have all gone through the process and nothing is surprising and, uh, you know, the throttling can be enabled in a smooth fashion. So that's the, that's the plan. And um, the other critical point is, you know, we need to be uh, connected all the time. Uh, I mean, these sessions are, are great for sharing information one way, uh, but we absolutely want two-way, much more engaged, uh, you know, collaboration, so that we are able to respond to your concerns and the challenges that you are running into in enabling throttling or any any issues that you run into. Uh, you know, we absolutely want to, you know, stay connected so that we are always here to help through the process. So for that, um, you know, as most of you know, uh, the data management and integration CMR group is quite active. 
and uh, we've been sharing throttling on that forum for about two months now already and you know many of you have given some good feedback and that has been incorporated into the design as we were working through the the development so we want to continue to do that um, and if you are not part of that group then please um, join that group and um, if you find trouble joining that group, then please do send one of us an email and uh, you know, we will help you join that group. But that is the group where you know, uh, everyone collaborates and you can share your concerns, give us feedback, and we are always active on that forum. Um, so that is the call to action. And um, that is the plan for how throttling will be rolled out in a in a you know phased and uh, throttled manner if you will uh, not like you know pu 37 is coming in august and throttling will be enabled no it's not going to be that way but uh, we all have to work together to make sure that um, you know we are enabling it in a in a methodical and controlled manner so that it doesn't affect our customers and our users uh, negatively so that's the plan and that's what we wanted to share with all of you um, so with that, uh, you know, we will open it up for Q&A and uh, Rahul Haitham, any questions um, that you would want to read, then yeah, we can take it up. Haitham, can you switch to the next slide, please? So let's go through the published list of questions. Um, we'll take it one at a time. So will this functionality work with uh, finance and operations on-premise LBD? Uh, yes, there is nothing in the design that is going to prevent this from working on LBD, unless um, you know when you validate and if you find any bugs, then please let us know. But uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, it has been designed uh, you know, independently of whether it is LBD or or a cloud deployment. Um, the next question is: Is throttling functionality D365 version specific? If yes, in which version is this available? I think Rahul answered that. Sorry, I should have seen that before. Let me go through this list. That is. Um, James is asking a question. Are additional priority options being considered for enhancements? Example 0, 1, 2 and 9. Um, no, James, um, that is not being considered. Uh, we specifically chose low, medium, high to keep it simple um, and not put the onus on you and other users of FNO and customers of FNO to decide what is the difference between 2 versus 3. So let's keep uh, it simple as low, medium, high. That is a, a granularity that kind of works across the board. So that is what we uh, went with. The next question, are there any plans to introduce a schedule for throttling? Example, throttle for users between two dates. Um, that was you know, discussed initially, but again, uh, in the interest of keeping the functionality simple, um, we have refrained from making any scheduling based um, you know, features for throttling. Um, so right now there is no such schedule, but we want to learn from all of you. So give us feedback and if that becomes like a you know, critical component, then we can absolutely have discussions. Um, next question. Sorry, maybe I missed. Is there any way to view or define the thresholds? So that's an interesting question. So the thresholds um, cannot be viewed. The thresholds cannot be defined um, by users and customers. The threshold and its definition is part of the algorithm itself. It is part of the throttling engine itself. And that threshold definition can vary over time, will vary over time based on um, based on the learnings that we get from from this going forward. So that is uh, that is one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is 
we really wanted to keep it simple from a, a user's perspective and not burden the user to think about specific resources, right? I mean, the user is not concerned about um, you know, how much resource this is going to use, um, and the user should not be concerned about that, but instead the user should uh, focus on the business side of things, which is these are the critical integrations for me, and this is the less critical integration for me. Let me configure that, and FNO will take care of it. So that is the approach we started with, um, and, and, and not to tax users to think about resources and get more technical into it. Um, next question, any plans to provide enable disable option per priority mapping grid entry? Um, so if I am, if I can decipher that question, it, it, it is probably asking, can there be a pass through which is never throttle this integration, so I want to disable throttling on that. If that was the intent of the question, and if we understood that, then the answer is no. Uh, we want to be consistent across all integrations and not start providing options that will bypass throttling. So it will always be either low, medium, high uh, priority. Um, is throttling only about integrations or will it include applications within D365 such as retail point of sale if using something like MPOS? So I think the bottom line is um, any request that come, I mean, right now it is FNO focused, which means any request that comes into FNO, um, as long as it is an OData or a custom service request, regardless of from where it is coming, it is going to get throttled. Now, as far as taking this approach to other parts of the Dynamics family of products, I mean, that's something that we can, uh, you know, we will take a look at, but I think the first thing is for us to learn from this, uh, this first um, initial release, and then we can, you know, take the feedback and then we can, you know, uh, go to the other uh, scenarios, if you will. Um, the next question, what happens to the request if the user didn't retry the throttled request? Well, the request will fail. Um, I mean, the the response was given to the client as 429. So the request did not come into FNO for processing. And from a client's perspective, that request did not get completed because there was a 429. So if the client does not send the request back, then the request, I mean, that, that thing doesn't happen. Um, I hope I understood the question and I answered it properly. And Haitham and um, Rahul, please chime in as well. Um, an external application integration user may utilize several FNO integration services. Are there plans to enable setting priority per service? Um, I mean, right now the throttling is enabled for custom services and OData. Uh, so that's at the protocol level. There can be services, there can be several services that use OData and custom services uh, from an implementation standpoint. So if the question is, um, can we configure throttling based on the scenario when you say service rather than protocol like OData, the answer is yes, it is going to be possible given what we demoed and given what will be there in PU37 as well, because uh, the Azure application ID is a, uh, is, is a parameter on which you can configure the priority. So if your integrations were designed as such where you have multiple Azure application IDs created uh, either by scenarios or either by some criteria that you determine fit, then you have the flexibility to configure high, medium, low based on the app ID, which will translate to the criteria that you are interested in. And I think there was a similar question from someone else as well, and I hope um, this answer applies to that question also. 
Um, is there a way to increase the resource allocated to O data? That is, if there's a critical O data process that should take priority over D365 user performance. Um, the last bit um, threw me off, but I'll try to answer the first um, the first part of it. I mean, like we um, like we discussed initially in the session, right? Um, the resources are a common pool of resources, um, so uh, you know the the resources that Odata needs is a common is a common pool. So it is going to pick from that common pool of resources. So um, there is there is no way today to allocate uh, you know dedicated resources to say Odata and only Odata can use that, that set of resources. Um, instead, um, we can assign priority to make sure that high priority Odata request gets the most uh, share of the system resources that are available, unless and until um, the system is even going to uh, tip off that high threshold value. Um, so I hope that answers your question. What are the next questions? Sorry, I'm just scrolling through this list. Um, are there parameters to concurrently allocate number of processors and cores per priority? Um, Rahul, do you want to take that? Sorry, can you repeat the question? So the question from James is, are there parameters to concurrently allocate number of processors and cores per priority? Example, more processors for high priority and simultaneous less processors for low priority. I think it's all black box, but I'll let you answer. Yeah, I, I don't think as Sunil mentioned at the beginning, uh, the, the resources in the system are limited. So what we are trying to do is allocate resources to higher priority requests first before a lower priority request. So no, there is no dynamic allocation of higher uh, cores or resources to higher priority. It will just happen by default uh, within the constraints of the of the environment. Right, and also um, the other aspect was to keep this simple from a user perspective. Um, so the actual threshold, the definition of it, what all does it take into account? Um, you know, processors and cores and all of that. I mean, that's all uh, well hidden inside the, the logic and the framework itself. So that from a user perspective, you know, we really don't have to worry about all those, uh, you know, system aspect of it. You know, as a SaaS service, we just have to focus on our, our, our business process and what is critical from a business perspective and let the system do its thing. So that was the fundamental approach you know, we took. Uh, the next question from Chris, is there a data entity to expose the priority mappings? If you needed a schedule, you could use a logic app flow to update the priorities based on requirements. I think that's that's a good feedback, Chris. Um, yeah, uh, we will take that as a feedback to see how we can. Yeah, we have to process that a little bit, but I I think I know what you are trying to say. So let's take that as a feedback and we'll see what uh, you know we can come up with. Um, Question from Sai, how does throttling help when two or more concurrent Odata API calls are made at the same time? So the throttling will help um, in different situations, right? So, I mean, it's a permutation and combination. So the, the concurrent requests that are coming in, they could be of different priority, for example. A low, medium, high comes at the same time. And if the system is below the threshold of low, all three will get in and they will be processed. But if the system had hit the low threshold already, then the low priority request will be sent back. The medium and high will come through. 
or if the system had hit medium already, the low and the medium will be sent back and high will be processed and so on and so forth. So hope that answered the question. Uh, let me scroll through. I'm trying to pick questions that has some votes on it uh, over questions that doesn't have any votes. So that's some kind of scrolling. Um, another question from Chris, will this impact dual write integrations? Uh, the answer is no, um, it will not impact dual write integrations. Um, so, Sunil, I think I can and I can take the next one. Um, yeah. OK, a question related to the sizing needs to be reassessed rather than continuing with a worsening throttling situation. So yeah. um, that's that's actually a, a good question because. Again, throttling is not to enforce limits. Throttling is not to uh, uh, make sure that you use the infrastructure that you have. Definitely, as we start with an estimate, the 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 actual usage, as Sunil mentioned, nine out of ten it will vary, and throttling is not to limit this. Throttling is just to preserve the system reliability balancing between my critical integrations and my online users and definitely if we assess that at some point of time there is a big variance between the actual usage and the initial size definitely this has to be revisited another estimate has to be completed and uh, um, if we determine that this environment needs to be resized uh, by scaling out or scaling up, definitely that would be the case. Right, thanks Adam. Thanks. Um, next, let's pick the next question. Uh, this question has four votes, so let's pick that. Will historic throttling information be used to advise on resizing of environments? I think that's a that's a great question, and absolutely yes, right? Because this is the first step. The first step is for us to understand our workloads and understand how throttling has been happening, and that that learning that information is what gets needs to tied up for um, discussions into how can we even prevent throttling? I mean, throttling is happening because something is wrong, right? I mean, the system either is not sized properly or the business has grown and um, sizing needs to be re-looked at and Haitham touched upon that. So yes, absolutely. Um, that is the intent that we get into that, that methodical process based on data to have some, um, you know, some data driven decisions, if you will. Um, what's the next question? Question from Tarek, when you update the priorities, how long is it before the AOSs know they have changed? Rahul? Right, I think uh, it is. Uh, uh, it's a few minutes. I I don't remember the exact number, but it's going to be. Uh, I think maybe a couple of minutes or something like that. But we can update that in the documentation. Yeah. Are you guys seeing any other questions with a uh, high number of votes? Then please feel free to bring that up. I'm scrolling here as well. I think we have covered almost all the questions in the published. Um, I think one of the questions is, uh, will these Q&A be included in the Tech Talk recording for future reference? Yeah, I'll... Rich or someone else, Nina, do you want to take that?
Yeah. Uh, the the uh, questions will not be visible post event. Um, however, we do uh, send them over to the presenters afterwards. And if you wanted to create an FAQ that could be posted potentially. Just a thought. Yeah, I think what we'll do is. Um, yeah, there were so many questions, so to be quite honest, we probably have not taken notes and copied all the questions, but uh, based on what we have responded and uh, the the theme of the questions, you know, we'll take that and then we'll see if we can you know, create a FAQ in our public docs so that it will be useful for uh, others as well. So yeah, we can certainly do that. Thanks for that. And I would also strongly recommend to use the Yammer link uh, because actually the, the questions we see here like um, so great feedback and we like more. Um, so at the end, our purpose is to provide the best experience um, from for you guys. So please, please, if you can just join the group. Uh, there is so many discussions. Um, we can answer the questions. It's going to be visible by everyone and it's going to help us, um, you know, adjusting as we learn during the process. Thank you. Okay, I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel and we'd like your feedback on today's session and to hear what you'd like to see in future events. Uh, the survey scores are on a scale of one to five with five being the highest score possible. Thank you for your participation. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. This concludes today's web conference. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and audience for joining us today. Please stay safe and have a great rest of your day or evening. Thanks all.